In an experiment that's raising questions about the line between life and death, scientists at Yale University were able to restore activity to the brains of dead pigs. While the organs never regained consciousness, they were left in a state that didn't meet the clinical definitions of alive or dead. Joining me now for a closer look at this is bioethicist at the University of Toronto, Carrie Bowman. Carrie, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, happy to do so. This story, <coughs> it's weird. It's strange. Yeah, isn't let's it? just put it out there. So yeah. let's make sense of what actually happened here. Yeah. We, we know the scientists restored cellular activity in the brain, yeah. but not consciousness. What does that mean? Well, it means, I mean, first of all, what because these pigs' brains had been you know, decapitated for hours previously. So really, you know, what should have occurred is there really should have been almost no activity at all. And there was neural activity and some electrical activity. But as you said in your intro, there was not consciousness. We it's need not like to there's very... zombie pigs. Yeah, no, no, there's no. zombie, but there's, the, but, but really what's very surprising. So what they did is after four hours, they created, imagine a kind of a chemical or artificial blood and they perfuse the brains with this. And in fact, what, you know, there really should have been almost no reaction to that whatsoever. And what was happening is that a lot of the activity was intact and, and quite restored. So it, it creates kind of a gray zone as to whether this is death or life. Now, of course, we're not pigs, but we're absolutely mammals. So it could really have implications for humans as well. And, you know, what I take from it is that the, the growing amount of evidence that this line between life and death is not a sharp line at all, that there's a process involved here. So these are really early days. And what it all means, you know, we're going to need some time to figure that out. But for now, it raises more questions related to potentially the validity of brain death. And if, you know, if some kind of cellular activity could be restored to humans, at what level we don't know, but mm. it really opens a lot. It opens the door to a lot of questions now. Carrie, I imagine that those who study strokes, those yeah. who study uh, other types of brain activity where there is the brain death, as you mentioned, or, mm -hmm. or loss of, of, of function within the yeah. brain, imagine they're really excited about this kind of research. Yeah, yeah, and it, it is a very, very good thing. I mean, the downside is it may erode some people's confidence with organ donation because a lot of that is preceded by definitions of brain death. This does not mean the definition of brain death is not valid. It really doesn't. But the other, you know, out there kind of risk is that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do their own it's called biohacking, their own research, this type of thing. There's already hundreds of people that are being cryopreserved, meaning they're being frozen, and some of them are having their brains frozen. There's no evidence that they could be reanimated, but it, it, it may, you know, give energy to that whole movement of, of cryopreservation as well, and more people freezing their brains in hopes that they could restore function at some point. This is a whole new world of research. It, it honestly really is. sounds like a sci-fi movie. Yeah, it absolutely is. And we'll, we'll just have to see where it's going. But it is very, very surprising that this occurred. And, but it's here, and it's here now. OK, Carrie, thank you so much for You're helping welcome. us make sense of this. Yeah. Yeah, we'll continue to follow this story pretty close.